Watch your back. What's up, guys? It's Ken, John, Speakeasy Podcast. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I booked a cruise, right? And one of the highlights that I see on the cruise is the silent disco. So you see morons walking around with these big things on their head like this, and they're just doing this. <laughs> I'm not going to that party. Yes. Well, they're in their own world. That's good, man. They're having a good time, right? Speaking about having... for the whole episode. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little... Yeah, I, you know, I'd pay you to do that. Uh, speaking about having a good time, we're about to have some bourbon right now. And this one is one of those Buffalo Trace collabs. And this one was a collaboration with none other than me. No. Chris Stapleton. Chris right? Stapleton. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I know it's a popular name. I don't know who that is. Tennessee whiskey, sweet strawberry wine. Did his wife cheat on him with his horse on the tractor, or what? Like what? Um, I don't know, but she did think the tractor was sexy. Mm. Yes, uh, but yeah, this one's coming from Buffalo Trace, and which is kind of cool because you don't see like a million things coming out of Buffalo Trace that are new. Uh, but I think we had this conversation the one time on this podcast, and Chris Stapleton is a recovering alcoholic, I think. Oh, yes. yes. And we're, we'll like, talk about we're like, wait, he's doing collaborations for, so did he get to try it? Yeah. If you're recovering or whatever, mm-hmm. um, or are you just throwing your name on it and saying, I sing Cha-ching. about whiskey, so let me put my name, you know, Cha-ching. I don't know. It's I kind of. It's all about the Benjamin. It's baby. a little bit of a joke to me. Uh, but what does it say in the back here? Good whiskey is like a good song. It requires no explanation. One taste should tell you everything you need to know. No one has to tell you how to feel about it. You simply settle in and enjoy. For this first-of-its-kind collaboration for Buffalo Trace Distillery, Traveler brings together the collective artistry of Chris Stapleton and master distiller Harlan Wheatley. Blend number 40 is a carefully curated result of countless hours of testing and tasting. It's a completely unique combination of whiskeys from award-winning distilleries and exactly what you'd expect, a premium whiskey that speaks for itself. (laughs) I'm trying to get my uh, radio voice uh, career here going, you know, so... So have you heard anything about this? Is it supposed to be good? Is it popular in the market right Um, now? I heard it's not bad. I heard it's like, like what a weird rip oh, here, that man. Sucks, it, yeah. When you get the cap off and the plastic's still there, it's still kind of like hanging up. Cut your fingers open trying to get it off. But you know what, though, you know sometimes I felt I feel like the best judge is well yourself. Yourself. Absolutely. Let's see how it is. Tennessee whiskey. This is not even. That's even the f- more ironic thing. He sings about Tennessee whiskey. This is not Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> this is Kentucky. Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, which is whiskey, but it's still not Tennessee, so... Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. Take me to another place. Cheers. All on those. Ooh. I, I don't want to put this in your head, but I'm getting a little medicinal cough syrup you kind of t- smell to it. <laughs> medicinal cough syrup. I don't know why I got that. I it's such a I was r- going to say bananas, and you came back with medicinal cough syrup. <laughs> I get the bananas, though. And I get, you know what it is? I would say, let's say uh, bananas and uh, ethanol. <laughs> <coughs> it's so bad that you're... No, 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 no. I, I'm messing around. All right. Doesn't smell bad. I, I do get the... Ba- I'm getting something else. Bananas. Uh, caramel banana. Bananas Forster? Yeah, I don't know. But I definitely get the bananas. Good good nose on right. that, buddy. All right. Hmm. Okay, candy. Not much to it. It's very light. Yeah, it is light. What was it's the... Uh, what are we coming at this? It's a 90 proof. 45% alcohol. So... I don't want to sound like a negative Nancy. Yes, it's good. Yeah. It's smooth. There's not much flavor to it, though. Like, nothing jumps out at me when I drink it. Yeah. That's not a bad thing, though. 
Mm. It's alcohol. I mean, it's it's it is what it's supposed to be. Just a a bourbon, like just a whiskey. You know, it's it's mapley, kind of. It's sweet. It's it's got a little bit of sweetness. I, to I it, think yeah. the candy. It's I'm getting that candy. To it. I'm getting that little bit of candle candy. A little bit of that mapley, slight butterscotch, slight caramel. More butterscotch than caramel. Not getting the banana on the taste, though. More on the nose. I'm not getting any of that. No? No, I'm really not. What like, I, I, I'm i getting nothing. I'm getting... I'm getting sweet alcohol. Mm. But no flavor profile where I can, like, break it down and be like, I taste just this. Yeah. Hold on, let me do a little water with it. Sometimes the water brings... You want a drop? No, I'm going to put some in there. I'll put a drop. I, I, I change this every episode, John. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Put a couple drops, even though it's not a high proof. But I just want to see if a little dilution does. That helps a little bit. I can see, I can see the butterscotch you're getting. Find it sweeter. I can see the butterscotch. Yeah. Not bad though. I like it. It's uh, it's an easy drinker. You yeah. know, it's uh, you're sitting on the TV, you watching reruns of the Cosby Show, and you want a bourbon. And, you know, you're just gonna. Yes, don't just don't watch it with Bill Cosby. No, no, no. Because then he'll give you something else inside he'll your bourbon. You, you put him pop right up yeah. your yeah, some ghetto pudding. <laughs> <laughs> you want my chocolate pop? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, my chocolate pudding pop. No, what is your uh, what's your final verdict? Like, what do you? I actually okay, going into it, I had more of a negative outlook. Uh, coming out of it, I've got more of a positive one. I think right. it's pretty good, actually. And I'm being completely honest. Was your negative outlook for the hatred of Chris Stapleton, or I don't have a hatred to Chris Stapleton. I actually think it's pretty good. Uh, we we joke around with our buddy Jay because uh, I I you weren't there, but I went to a concert with him, and I was like, "Who's this Chris Simpleton character?" Simpleton. <laughs> yeah, Simpleton. Uh, he wasn't bad. He's he's got, he's got quite the following, actually. Um, I, I yeah, I know it's a big name. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't tell you what he looks like. Uh, I I don't know any of his songs. You say Tennessee whiskey, and I yeah. I, I don't even recognize like no? maybe if I heard it. You don't but know you just song. saying Tennessee whiskey doesn't do anything for you. You don't know that song, sweet strawberry wine. No, no, no. Street no. Strawberry it's the only song wine. that everyone. If you if you if you were to sing a Chris Stapleton song, that's the one that people will sing because that's the main. That that I was really would kind of put him out there. I think you know. All right, and. Um, yeah, but better outlook. This would actually be good, and it's good neat. Don't get me wrong, but I think this would be good in old fashioned as well. Yep. Yeah. Because of the sweetness. Yes. Because it's got that nice sweet. You can sip. It's a daily sipper. And what's it called? Traveler. Traveler whiskey. Yep. 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 Um, and you it, can even travel with it. <laughs> just yeah. walk around with it in a paper bag. Yes, just put it in a paper bag. Um, be fine. Budget friendly. Uh, thirty-five to forty. Oh, right. Budget friendly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Very budget friendly. All right. A good. Uh, yeah, it's a good sipper. Not bad. I might, you know. Hmm. I'm. What's today's Friday, right? It is Saturday. Su- Sunday. I'm going to uh, to a neighbor's barbecue. I might travel with this one. Oh bring yeah, it. you should. I think I should you bring should. this one. This is a, this will be a good sipper. Oh, yeah. So you're going to a barbecue. All right, let's talk about that now. Yeah. It's a little early for barbecues, no? Um, What's the occasion? Is it like a party, or is it just he's going to cook for you? He's going to cook for... It's your new boyfriend, right? Um, for us. Um, you know, I you know, it's nice to have friends out here that don't oh, live three mile, 30 miles away, you oh, know? Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm if you can, that, uh, if you're willing to travel here every couple days and well, hang I out, I do. You know, no, you travel every few weeks. <laughs> um, that would be great. You know, yeah. and you know, this is Andrew. Yeah, I'd love do, to hang out again with. We uh, do some some Andrew. fun stuff. You know, uh, I'm getting jealous. Am I? Am I, I was going to say, am I detecting uh, a little jealousy? Somebody's here? taking my spot. I'm ta- t- this detecting a little jealousy here. I see. I see. One day he's going to be sitting in this chair. Right here <laughs> <with his microphone. laughs> 
Oh, John, you can never be replaced. Mm-hmm. But um, and I'm gonna be like a woman scoring. I'm gonna come in and <laughs> knock all the bottles down. No, it, and it's funny because when we talk about this podcast, I don't think we can. I don't think that it can exist without the two of us. You know, right. like. Because I just we have that kind of unique well, humor together. Yeah, you know? you'd have to start a whole new dynamic with somebody, and then it's like, yeah, I don't know. I think will we, it work the same way? We're both dry and kind of messed up in the head a little bit, you know. Yeah. And I think it works, uh, and you know, now and John, I mean, likes we tried with too. Jay, and he just it obviously just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Jay's a good guy, yeah. um, but uh, but he actually, my neighbor was telling me he's like he he's been. Every year he wants to do like a like smoke and roast or whatever yeah, it is, a, it, a leg of lamb. Sm- oh yeah, oh nice. And he's like, I can't. He's like, my kids won't eat it. And he's like, it's just me and my wife. And I can't do a whole leg of lamb for just me and my wife. Yeah. He's like, so if you're interested, I was like, hell yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, you know? leg of lamb's good. Yeah, yeah but do a nice lo- leg of lamb. And he's yeah. he's like an artist with that stuff. So you is know. your wife friendly with his wife? The way yeah. you guys are friendly? Oh, uh, not the way we are, as like in like hanging out. No, they don't hang out or like they don't make out like you guys do. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Look, I'm really detecting the jealousy here. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, no. not at all. Yeah, uh, actually, we did hang out because it took you long enough to find a friend out here. <laughs> I'm glad. Do you? Um, yeah, it's tough when you're new to an area. Yeah, man. Um, but we went out to the city recently, and I didn't know it was a Portnoy spot. So I was looking for like popular pizza places in the financial district, mm-hmm. and um, I came across Joe's Pizzeria. Oh yeah, famous Joe's man. Everybody loves Joe's. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. I just know it had amazing reviews, and I'm like, cool, let's check this place out. I looked it up after the fact on mm-hmm. like, and saw a YouTube video, Portnoy, and I was like, oh, shoot. And he gave it like an 8.5 or something, yeah. you know? He gave and, it a good score. And I'm like, this is really, I actually, I was, I was pretty drunk, but I actually said, I'm like, I think this is the greatest pizza I've ever had. I was just going to ask you, so did you, did you like it? But I was also did drunk. You a picture of it? I was also drunk, yeah. So that is, I mean, it. Just they had like pictures on the wall. There's like a picture there of like Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> nice. And he's got like, this is the inside here. And um, I was like, when we walked in, I saw all these pictures and, and this stuff. And you saw Spider-Man in here or something like that. I was like, uh, I think this place must be well known or something. Yeah, that's Joe's. Absolutely. Yeah. I've heard of Joe's. Yeah. That was a bar we went to before. So... Did you like it better than the pizzeria we went to when Dustin was around? Which I forget, what pizzeria? Did John's. You go to? John's a bleaker. John's a bleak. I did like it better, but like once it. again, I was. Oh, I don't. Yeah, sometimes thing takes better when you're a little tipsy. So I, I told my neighbor, I was like, "Dude, all I remember is I said that was the best pizza I've ever had." But I said I'd like to revisit it. Yeah. It's completely sober, you know, <laughs> without having a few. Drinks. What would make it the best pizza you ever had? The sauce, the cheese, like the combination. It was of just a combination. Like... It was the right combination. I like a saucy pizza. It was just enough sauce. I like a cheesy pizza. It was enough cheese. Okay. See, that's a little bit outside Portnoy element. He likes more of that thin, just like you know, it, there's no flop or anything like that. Yeah, he's a like a bar pie type of guy. Yes, and that's fine. That's what he likes. Thin and crispy. He's not the law. He doesn't like the Neapolitan. Type that's of okay. Pizza. I do. Yeah. So I I'm the same. Yeah. I mean I love a good a, a good bar pie, thin and crispy. Yeah. But what you're spending on it, I'd rather have a nice Neapolitan pizza under a brick oven. Or, yeah. You know, something like Or a grandma. Or a oh. grandma, yeah. Yeah. He likes old women. Yeah. Um and so the other day I was picking up uh pizza. Or was it yesterday? I was picking up some pizza. I had pizza yesterday as well. Oh, yeah. And I saw the guy, he was making, he was transferring this deep dish looking pizza. Wasn't sure exactly what he was doing, but he was putting, taking it from a deep dish into a regular pan, maybe one of the crisp the crusts or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was picking up my pizza, which is just a plane, because I was, it was again for me and my son. And um, I, I go to him, I was like, what do you got going on there? And he goes, Chicago style. I was like, you do Chicago style here? I was like, I didn't know you do Chicago style. It's not on your menu. He's like, 
He's like, you see all this pizza here? It was all in the, the slices and stuff. None of this is on our menu. <laughs> he's like, True, yeah. he's like, if I put this on my menu, our menu's going to be huge. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like, I got to, you know. I was like, so if I call you next time and I say I want Chicago-style pizza, we'll do it. Yeah, sure. It's like, hell yeah. Did it look like a Chicago-style pizza? Yeah, it did. It did. And and then I it got me into asking. I said, do you do upside-down pies? You know, like your Bruno's or whatever. I was like, you do upside-down pies. He's like, sure, are we do it. He's like, see that one right there? That's an upside down slice. It was a slice or something. Was so. it? Yeah, it looked like it, but it had the basil on top, which I, upside down. Eh. Margarita. Yeah. I mean, upside down pie. All you used to see is Parmesan cheese on top of the cheese. That's all you should really. Sauce. That's th- all you should see. Yeah, that's all you should see. Yeah, that's why I kind of was like, I should say, if I were upside down, I'd be like, no basil though. No. You know, the, no, you know, just to keep it like traditional, but. Yeah, so I always get excited about that, like when I discover something, because I'm, I, we grew up where John lives right now is where I grew up, and we had some fantastic pizza places. We did, and we were spoiled by the pizza. At least I was, I was. He still has it, at yeah. least, uh, spoiled. Um, where you can go to Bruno's, you get that nice upside down pie. You can go to JoJo's and get that nice unique sauce that they have there. You know, or you yeah. can go to now. Uh, John actually was nice enough to bring some sandwiches from Mini Vinny Mutz's. We have to do the pizza next time. Yeah. Yeah. Vinny Mutz is probably the greatest Mutz uh, around. Uh, it, yeah. He's just, he's famous for his Mutz. Fairly Vinny's new Mutz. place. Um, he won in New Jersey in the pizza he won championship. The, yeah. He won the championship for his pizza. Yeah. And he's not necessarily even a pizza place. No. That's the crazy thing. It's funny. It was a hole in the wall, just mozzarella cheese. And then he threw a couple sandwiches on the menu. And then he got so, so popular, he had to move to a bigger place. Now he does dinners. He's got stuffed breads. Everything is just tremendous in there. And you know, I don't go in there enough. And I, yeah. I, I, I have to start going there more. Oh my God! So John brought me um, the Italian. It's called the Italian style. Yeah. And it's just like uh, ham, ham, salami, super salami, sweet su- su- yeah, sweet super soda with the with the fresh mozzarella and the chunk of mutz they put on it. Like, oh, oh my yeah. god! It, like it's like it just like the mutz just melted in your mouth. And it's good bread, good good seeded semolina. Bread. Oh my god! And I, I go to John. I took a couple bites, and I was like, "Dude," I, I said to him, "I'm sorry, John, but." I'm sorry because I'm going to ask you to bring some more again <laughs> yeah. because this is fantastic. Next really time I'll good. bring out the pizza. We'll do the upside down pizza. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bring over I'll, I'll just a pound of the, of the fresh mozzarella. by itself. Uh, yeah. It, like it dissolves in your mouth. Like, yeah. It's so good, bro. It's, it's so fresh. It's like the perfect amount of salt, everything. Vinny Mutz is out of Lynnhurst, New Jersey. Check it out Check if out you're ever Mutz. out in that way. Shout out to those guys for being like so so good at what they do. Yeah. So. I had the Denise Denise. Just ham and mutts. Ham and mutts. Simple. Simple. John's like, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Yeah. You know, you go to these places that are so popular. Do you follow the Jersey uh, Sandwich Joints page on Facebook? Yeah, I do. And like how, what is it? Tal- tal- uh, J- our buddy Tal-Lacia. Jay is the number one poster on there. Uh, like, yeah. He's on the pizza one. I mean, oh, the oh, oh, The oh, Jersey oh, oh. Sandwich Joints. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody's all yeah. about t- Talercios, Talercios yeah. down in, uh, in Monmouth. All right, Talercios. It's like the most popular sandwich place right now. Yeah, I am Jersey. part of that group though too. Yeah, but and and the sandwiches are like this tall, because of the stuff they pile it on. Yeah. they just pile on way too high. I'm not all about the meat. No, man. no. Number Does one, does that make it a good sandwich because it has no. a lot of it? No, we're gonna talk about this. No, but keep saying what you're saying. It's number one. It's the bread, mm-hmm. and it's the meat to bread ratio. Yeah, and so if you're a mutz person, it's about how much mutz. Is actually on there. Yeah. I want them to take a fresh mutz and just cut it by hand up like this. I don't want it on the slicer, nice and thin. Give me a big chunk of mutz and a little bit of meat. Yeah. And a nice bread. Nice, crusty bread. And the bread. good thing about mutz is that it can actually, you can compress it. You could bring it down. Yeah. yeah. And uh, too much meat, you can't really, get, doesn't have as much give, you know? No. And so you're, you're eating like, yeah. you know? You know the Vinnie mutz sandwiches was the perfect amount of meat. Yeah, perfect. Perfect amount of meat. Not too little. Not yeah, too they much. don't skimp on it. <clears throat> and you know, it's it's. It, I always found it funny when people post something. Um, say it's a pizza place, for instance, and the slices are like triple the size of a normal slice, and they're like, "Look at this slice! Look at look at this!" And people are so wowed by the size. My question always is. But does it taste good? Most likely, no, because the yeah. size is the gimmick. 
Yes. It's not the taste of the food. Yes. It's like like those places that have like the like uh, I haven't actually ate it, but there's one place Tito's burritos. I've never actually ate it, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. It might be freaking amazing, but they're ta- they have those tacos that are like gigundo yeah, like tacos. That's too much. But once again, it's the gimmick of it. It's the gimmick. It's like a rich guy who drives a big car, but he's got a little schlong because he's rich and he can get a nice car. Yeah, but he's making up for something. You ever notice that guys in like. Huge pickup trucks are always like five foot four or three or two or something like that. You know, they're like, how do you get up there, man? And they're like this skinny and like, (laughs) you see them come out of these huge pickup trucks. And I and I, I I always tell my wife I said and hey not to insult anyone who drives a big pickup truck but <laughs> you're making up for something um <laughs> y- well yeah I'm really compensating for it here but no I find like they're the biggest douchebag drivers that are out there a lot of the time yeah. like they're the ones that speed up or cut you off or do something and you're like dude you yeah. know yeah. like really you have a big tr- I understand how oh, cool you got a big truck man I'll get you a medal tomorrow. But don't drive like an asshole, please, you know? I don't know, man. I, I just find that these big pickup truck drivers, you know, um, there's, like, huge ones. Yeah. And they got their their, rem, their, their, their the Hemis in there, and they got their, you know, and we're yeah, yeah. going to be a race car driver and a big, anyways. So back to what we were saying about <laughs> big. Frank Yeah, yeah, Frank Galamont. So what we were saying, though, like, a, a, back to, you said big sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, the big. I mean, it just just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. I work uh, in Fairfield, and the pizza place I often go to is called Boardwalk Pizza. All right, and they have a boardwalk pie that is gigantic. It's like this big, mm-hmm. right? And I brought it home one day just so my kids can see like a big ass slice of pizza, and they're like, "Yeah, but we don't care for it too much." Yeah, but I go there all the time for pizza. Yeah. But it was that big gigantic pizza. As soon as you pick it up, it's like, yeah. It's like Limp Biscuit, you know? Yeah. Um, but they make these pan pizzas that are delicious. Dude. Yeah. Like, they're thick. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. And it's it's the gimmick of the big stuff is not always, like you said, bigger's not always better. It isn't. It isn't. Big sandwich. You can't wrap your mouth around it. No. It's ridiculous. Yes. It's, uh, and I actually, that sandwich um, Facebook group that you had mentioned, which is, I think it's, nas- is it, it's national. It's a Jersey. Oh, no, Jersey. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. But anywho, um, people have posted pictures and you can tell where these people are really like anal about their sandwiches of those huge sandwiches and you would see a lot of comments that's way too much meat way too much yeah that's way too much meat there's not i mean we, it's not a balance yeah no we can even talk about um my mother's boyfriend's uh deli yeah right he won a couple years ago like best taylor ham or pork roll they call it down yeah. there pork roll egg and cheese in new jersey and then you put up a picture of it and people are like that's absolutely disgusting yeah They're thick slices yeah. of pork roll with like six to eight slices, so yeah. it's like this thick. Yes. They're like, wait a minute, take it easy. I would literally take half of at least half of it off and say, "This is my breakfast for the next four yeah. days." <laughs> you know? I just, I'll just ask re- for three slices instead of six when I go, and I'll just reheat know? it. I'll reheat it and add egg every time or something. But you got whatever. people that are voting it as amazing, and then you got people like that's just way too much. It's way too much. Yeah, you know, like that tote. I don't even know how to say it. Telercios. Um, they they're they're famous for like their sandwiches that are like it's got like a chicken cutlet and then it's got like turkey on it and chicken yeah. breast and ham and yeah. brisket and then it's got arugula and fresh mozzarella and provolone and it, and it's like this big yeah and like that's that's too many ingredients man it's way too many keep it simple stupid exactly good amount of meat yeah not crazy yeah throw that cheese to me I'm a cheese guy yeah so even though I make a sandwich at home I'm throwing like four, five, six slices of Swiss cheese on that baby. Ooh, I'll do two really? slices of like turkey, but like six slices of Swiss. Uh, or six slices of I don't of like Swiss and, cold. Yeah. I, I li- like Swiss cold more than I like it uh melted. Melted, yeah. I like it way more melted. Yeah, see, I, I like a nice Cuban sandwich with a melted Swiss still on there. I've never had a Cuban sandwich. Yeah. That's the only time I'll or, or a Swiss and mushroom burger. Mm. You know? I I don't like cold Swiss. I'll take it off. I don't like it. Yeah, I like it cold. It's so weird that I can like something warm and melted and not cold. And I'm opposite. I yeah. like it cold, not warm, because I feel yeah. like when it's warm, it gets stinky. Uh, I know. I like that. I like that it actually gets stringy. Like Swiss can actually get yeah. stringy because it's such a hard. You could just rip it and like I yeah. don't know. Uh, so well, yeah, I mean that's that's. Bigger's not always better. And that goes with pizza. That goes with that sandwiches goes with and penises. It goes with all this stuff. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. My next point is uh, sometimes it's okay. This is what we're working up to. <laughs> sometimes it's okay not to be you know, the biggest one in the room. 
Yeah. So, today we're going to talk about a little bit about etiquette. Etiquette, etiquette, etiquette. Is etiquette out the window? Are kids forgetting what etiquette is? You know, what direction are we going with this? And when I say etiquette, I mean as simple as wearing a hat in a restaurant, holding the door for someone, um, saying please, saying thank you, saying hello, are, are, because kids are getting more and more disconnected. Um, unfortunately, there's been a lot of forced disconnections because of COVID and everything of that sort and what happened with that. Uh, and people were almost afraid of each other. People were wearing masks. People felt like they were h- hiding behind that mask a lot, where they the etiquette kind of just went out the window. Are we lost now? What's going on here with this? Um, I see it more and more. People don't hold the door, or if you or if you hold the door for them, there's no thank you. You know, and I'm kind of like one of those. I still I've always kept it's the way I was raised. I always say please. I say thank you. Um, if someone lets me go, this is the big one. If I let someone go um, that's pulling out of, a, uh, say, a driveway or something, and I stop and I let them go, one of my biggest things I hate is that when they drive and they just dri- drive right by you, Not even hardly you. even look at you, no wave, no thank you, no nothing. And it seemed, and to me, the trend is either around me, it's either uh, like a mom that's picking up their kid in their rush or whatever, and they're trying to get to wherever they have. Like my, my wife always says, she's like, she's like, a lot, I feel like a lot of people, around, mom, these moms around here don't work. I always wonder what they're in a rush to get to. <laughs> you know? but, um, but yeah, it's it, they're always in a rush, and they always have a huge truck, and they never say thank you. And I, I, or it's the young generation where I see a lot of, young teenagers and they'll pull out and then there's no wave thank you nothing yeah. and the other day it's a I, different world we live in the other day I was at uh, it was for, well, now it was a couple of weeks ago for Easter I went to Lasoni's. oh nice in in, uh, in our town that we grew up or I grew up in John's, John's there now but the um, I went there and it was a family walking out and um, and me and Maria were, were actually running a little behind because we couldn't find parking. Um, we had to park a little farther away by the bank there, mm. uh, Kip's old house right there, that yeah, block yeah. there. And um, so we were already running behind. But this family was walking out. It was like eight of them or something. And I held the door for Every all, single one of them? Every single, not. So I everyone that walked by, I gave a nod. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, but there was no thank you, nothing. You know who gave me, who surprisingly gave me the thank you at the end, the last person to walk out? It was maybe a 13 year old, she was like maybe a 13, 14 year old girl. Yeah. She was the only one that said thank you. Yeah. I was like, wait, all the adults didn't say thank you, but the 13, 14, whatever she was, said thank you? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I go to, I go to Wawa a couple mornings, uh, to get my coffee before work, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, I always hold the door open for people, and I will tell you, I get the opposite. Yep. I get a lot of thank yous. Really? I get a lot of, no, you go. No, no, you go. No, you go. All right, thank you. I get a lot of people telling me, have a nice day. Yeah. Have a great day. Maybe, maybe the or, people up there, are, you, I, you know what, it's not even more Fairfield more. people. It's like workers. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're always in like trucks and they were like dirty yeah. fingernails, like they're yeah. going to work to do yeah. a hard day's labor. I wonder. Could maybe, be proximity. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But that is one place that I always get a thank you. Yeah. Or you first, or have a good day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even walking into a restaurant now, or, or or a store, or anywhere, like people, they don't say anything. But you know, I think part of it too. I think, especially with the younger generation, parents have to teach their kids. Yeah. This is what you do. You say thank you. You say please. My son is very. It was very shy. And many times, many many a times, when we're walking into the school, the crossing guard would say. And she she knows his name. Hey, you know, and she says his name, and he just keeps walking. So we always every day we'd give him a, a, a talk. We're like, hey, you have to say thank you. You have yeah. to say hi. Say hello. Say hello. Someone says hi. The respectful thing is to say hi back. Finally, he came around and started saying hi, whatever. But that's part of tr- teaching. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times they don't know that. They don't know that's the way that that you're supposed to be doing it. Um, as far as say like hat wearing, we still try to take our hats off in a restaurant. It depends. If I'm at a bar, no. 
Depends on the restaurant. Depends on the restaurant. If I'm going to like a Chili's, or a, no, my hat's staying on. Yeah, I know. If I'm going to La Sony, yeah, I don't yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, but you would probably wouldn't even go in there with a hat to no, begin with. No, no. Um, if I was wearing a hat, yes, I, I agree with you. Sometimes it depends where you are, what you're doing. Um, I've kind of personally thrown the hat inside a house out the window because I do it all the time. I wear my hat in people's houses plenty of times, you know. Cause oh, yeah, yeah. That was a... I mean, I wear a hat everywhere except to work, basically. Yeah. You don't see my hair. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But so. if we are doing a nice restaurant, Lasoni, Jalone, yeah. uh, Tejo, yeah. I, I will not wear a hat. Yeah. Yeah. And I won't wear a t-shirt. Yeah. It, it'll always be a button-down or a polo. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's funny, like I mentioned when the show started that I booked a cruise, and I joined like the Facebook group for the cruise, and everybody's the same question. On dress-up night, do we have to dress up? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's dress-up night. You know? Can we wear shorts? No. It's dress-up night. I think I went on a so, cruise one time, um, and I purposely di- I didn't bring something, and I just didn't show up that night. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, when I first started cruising years and years ago, I would bring a suit. Always wear a suit. Now I'm down to just like khakis and a button down, mm-hmm. um, khakis and a polo. I don't dress up, but that's because nobody else does. So, yeah. But I'm not going to go in there with shorts and my flip flops and my hat or my. But you're not necessarily or... helping the cause. If that's what they're going for, then maybe you should dress up. Nah. Well, yeah. I'm not a dress up person. I would rather skip it than get dressed up. Mm-hmm. But if the masses are not wearing suits and tuxedos anymore, then I'll just follow along. To the point where you almost stand out if you're dressed up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, look at this guy in his suit, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. But I think, yeah, etiquette has gone, uh, it is going out the window as far as the proper things. But let me ask you this. Do you hold it, do you open the door for your wife when you get in the car or no? In the car? Yeah. No. You don't walk yeah. to the other side and open the door for you. No, it's too far away. Yeah, That's more like chivalry, though. It's not really etiquette, yeah, is it? No. I don't know. I mean, if I'd start dating a new girl, maybe. That's my <laughs> wife. I mean, we've been together for how long? <coughs> she can't open her door now. she got issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do it. <laughs> but whichever daughter's, like, walking on my side of the car, I open the door for them. They yeah. get in the back seat, you know, and then they jump in. And, and do you say, get in there! Get your ass in the back seat! Shut up! <laughs> do they say thank you when I do it? 99% of the time, no. They just hop in. Yeah. That's the thing I'm worried about with my son sometimes. I'm like, like when I, like, a lot of times I sneeze in front of my son and he doesn't say, God bless you. But that's yeah. like, a, you know, it's a common, you know, thing you do. And um, I, 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 still thank you. So sometimes I'm like, do I tell him you should say God bless you? Because I just sneeze. Is that like a little smug of me to say that? <laughs> or no, I don't know. If nobody says God bless you in my house when I when I sneeze, I just yell thank you, and then I'll get it. God bless you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. But you know, like me at work, you, you know, if I sneeze, the lady next to me will say God bless you, and I'll say it back to her. But if the lady five cubicles down sneezes, just pretend I don't hear it. Mm-hmm. You know. But you'll hear other people like bless you from across the room. Like why? Yeah. Do you, do you have you ever like um, pretended you're on the phone for any reason? All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Like in in certain situations, especially in work. Like if I'm passing a, I'm gonna sound horrible right now. <laughs> if I'm passing like a homeless person or something that is about to come up to my window, I'll I, either I'll have the uh, take the phone and put it up to my ear and, and go. You know, and I'll make the expressions, you know, like I'm angry or something. Or I'll pretend I'm talking on speakerphone. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? You know? I take all the money out of my wallet and I sit on it and I open up my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, uh, we went to uh, a concert at Prudential Center last night. And uh, there was a guy, homeless guy, sitting when you leave. Yeah. Uh, he was sitting up against a lamppost, and you had to walk by him to get through. And he just, no cup, yeah. no sign, yeah. and he just said, God bless you to everybody. Have a good night. God bless you to everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. And my, we walked past him. My wife's like, he's not even like asking for money. He's just yeah. like saying, have a good night. Yeah. And she whipped out a few bucks, and she's like, I'm going to give this guy some money. And, yeah. and she's like handing him the money, and he was just like sitting there and just, like shocked. Like, oh, yeah. oh, thank you. God bless you. You know, thank yeah. you. So I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice person she is. I was yeah. like, come on, Link, get, yeah. oh, what are you doing? Put that money back in your pocket. What are I you know, doing? I know. My, my homeless giving is, has, has dwindled to nothing now. You know, I just. I, I've, you know, the problem is you just don't know who's homeless anymore and who's not. You see homeless people with these and cups, that's the and then problem. you see them the next day and they got like brand new Jordans on. Exactly. You know? That's the problem. I don't trust that either A, they're using it for drugs, or B, they're. The last time I did something, I think, is when I was selling beer. I used to work in this one area, it was a little sketchy. I used to see the same lady outside the store. I and I even said to her, I said, "Listen, I'm not give, I'm not going to give you money. I I just, you know, I'm like, do you need food?" And she's like, "Yeah, I can use some food, you know, whatever." I said, "All right, I'm going to go get you some food. I'll be right back." That was the last, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, just because I, I just I feel like sometimes they're just using the money in the wrong places. I can't yeah. speak for them all, you know. No. You see these videos of people like though. They're like. The guy drops like freaking a uh, 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 bricks of cash next to a homeless person or something, and everything. And I'm kind of like, are you really doing them good? Yeah. I saw the one video he did that, and this woman in the video that walked by when he saw him do that walked back and then walked back to again. You see the same woman walk back again past this person laying down. She was ready to freaking take it, you know, yeah. and. Oh, I saw a video of a, a homeless lady, well, saying, claiming she was homeless, gathering all this money, and somebody was recording her, and at the end of the night, a car comes and picks her up, Yeah. and she gets in the car, you know, and then they drive away. Or she, she, you know, another night, she drove the car, Yeah. parked it, got out, sat on the corner, got the money, and you see her, she's like, counting it, yep. puts it in her pocket, gets in the car, and drives off, and everybody's like, what, what the fuck? What yeah, she? that's the problem. I saw yesterday, I was driving out of Home Depot. And I saw a woman with her two children on the corner, you know? And I'm like, rough. your kids should be in school. I know. And, like, are you really homeless or are you using them to get more money? That's, or, like, you know, the, I used to hear stories about these gypsies that they were drugging their their babies to make it, you know, so that they would sleep and they would hold their babies and rock them back and forth and ask for money and this and that and whatever. So I almost, it's it's almost like, are you helping the problem or are you adding to the problem? Because if yeah. you keep giving them money, they're going to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. There's just no, there's no way to know. Yeah. You know, my dad does a soup kitchen. Uh, yeah. And he, he said he met, you know, this guy, he has this conversation, the same guy every time he does it. Mm -hmm. He comes in, he's, he's not dirty looking, but, you know, he, he sleeps in the shelter and he comes. Yeah. And my dad's like, what's your, what's your deal? Because he's just like, it looks like a clean cut, nice looking yeah. guy. The guy goes was like a, he was like a, a financial guy in Wall Street. And something happened, and he lost everything. Yeah, lost his house, lost his job. Nobody will hire him anymore. Um, and he's like, you know, I've lost my family. I'm just forced to live in the shelter now, and then I come here for food. And my dad's like, wow, like, educated man who is, yeah. you know, like. It's, it's a, I know you don't know who's scamming you, who's not. And yeah. I feel like once you start begging, I don't know. I'm not a beggar. Yeah, you know, that's why I remember we talked about that one day, like the uh, the the GoFundMe page. Right? Yeah, like at what point are you kind of begging for money? Yeah, I know, I know, but you know, there's always, and that's a thing which gives you hope because there's always the exception. There's always that someone that really can do something with their life. Like watch the movie Pursuit of Happiness, um, where he was homeless at one point, but the guy was like a genius. And you know, and he's doing his best, and he's doing his whatever he can to provide a a, a life for his son in the future. And he ended up doing it, um, coming from nothing to something. And you know, and there's always the exception, but unfortunately, I find that the masses, though, I feel like a lot of these people are either taking the money and doing drugs or doing whatever. I saw uh, when I was in the city the other day, there was a guy laying coming out of the 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 uh, train station. It's a guy laying on the ground, and he was just, like, hysterically cracking up. I'm like, listen. Stay away from that guy. You're like, you know, it's one of those things, like, you don't just, that just doesn't happen. You're on something. Yeah, you're on something. Yeah. Did you see the video of that guy pooping in the subway? No. He was squatting on a garbage can, and while he was, like, looking at his phone. He didn't look homeless. Yeah. He was, like, looking at his phone while he was, like, just Well, I was a watching a YouTube like, video at the time. <laughs> Wrong color. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I got really like lethargic and tired right now. Like I feel like I'm not even like. Do I look like I'm not even here? Like into it? Like I feel like I'm just like. 
I think there was. Did you roofie me? No, not yet. I was fine. Like right before we drank Chris Stapleton's whiskey. I'm still fine. But yeah, I'm just like. <laughs> They'll tell our viewers that because they're going to be like, why am I watching? This guy's falling asleep. I don't know. I He's falling asleep on his own podcast. We yeah. we talked. Maybe it's the Bill Cosby thing. I mentioned Bill Cosby. You know? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like he did something to me. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think we I'm mentioned fucking, Bill I'm Cosby so, last episode. Did we? I don't, <laughs> I don't even think it was this episode, was so it? so fucking boring. I'm putting myself to sleep. Oh, yeah. But anyways, yeah. What do we got here, Johnny? Uh, when I did uh, Lancaster for Easter, we went to uh, Rum Springer Brewery, and I got deceived a little bit. Uh, they had a list of beer to go, which I thought was theirs. I did a video in there and everything, thinking I was going to bring. I even think I said in the video, I'm going to bring stuff back for Kev. And all it said on the on the on the chart there was Juicy Jouster, and I was like, Yeah, yeah. let me get some of that Juicy Jouster. And uh, I bring home, it's not even their beer. Yeah. It's Swashbuckler Brewing Company over in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, which is right next door. I mean, Mannheim, is, it's right there. It is, yeah. you know, that that area. But I thought I was getting some Rum Springer Brewing. This is a New England style IPA. Rum Shaker? Yeah. yeah. All I want to do is zoom, 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 zoom. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like a New England style IPA. Yeah. Uh, 6.3%. No, it's got a more of an amber kind of. It's not. It's got some haze to it, but yeah. Citrus and Idaho 7 hops. I'm getting. On the nose, I'm, de- I'm getting some kind of. Pineapple? A little pineapple, a little papaya, actually, too. Grays? Grays papaya. Say what you got, Johnny. Yeah, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. No I feel like I know what this beer is going to taste like before you even drink it. Cheers, dude. Cheers. All right. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not great. No, I like it. Do you? Yeah. There's an aftertaste. It's a little bitter on the finish, but yeah. We're doing, yeah, the last few, couple of episodes. We've been a lot of 3.75s, I feel like. That's what I think I give this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. Uh, but not bad. Where are they out of again? I'm sorry? Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Mannheim. Mannheim. Um, Got the jouster on it, yeah. When I went to pick up our sandwiches today, I said, thank you, have a great day. And she was like, Thank you, you too. Like she was in shock. Oh yeah, you know, caught you off guard. Yeah, or, or like she caught, you caught her. I off caught guard. her off guard. Yeah, you know, I always do that. Even at the phone calls, like when yeah. I get phone calls at work, you know, yeah. I'm like mean to the people because yeah. they annoy the shit out of me. Yeah. At the end, I was like, "Have a nice day." I'm like, oh, thank you, you too. I was. Uh, I got a haircut today, and um, look like you got them all cut. You only got one. Huh? My hair? Yeah. Oh. You got them all cut. It was a mall cut. Yes, I got it at the uh, the lemon tree. Um. Remember the lemon tree? It was like a haircut place or something, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, so my barber... Wow, we're failing at this. I was talking to my barber. He was recently away. I thought you were your own barber. I, I, no, I started getting haircuts again. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I'm getting fades now, man. Nice. I, 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 I went away from the buzz cut, and now I'm doing kind of like whatever, doing something a little different, growing a little longer on top and having fun now. You grow a pony? Ponytail? No, 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 no. Man bun? Man yeah, bun? No, that's not my thing. My hair gets too curly. It's not, it won't, I don't know. It'll be too... Wild, and I'd get pissed off and shave it off. But um, so I was talking to my barber, and he um, he was just uh, out in he was in Japan for a few days, and then he was in Philippines. He was a, it was a three week vacation. He was um, with his girlfriend. His uh, girlfriend's Filipino. They were going to visit some family of hers, and they're spending some time out there. I said, "How was your trip? How was everything?" You know, and um, he goes, "Oh man, he's like Japan is awesome. The food is that. good." He's telling me he's like, "Man." He's like, people are so much nicer out there. <laughs> and he was like, you know, like the little things and stuff. And he's like, the streets are so clean. And he's he's like, it's actually frowned upon to eat on the streets out there. You know, you'd like to eat, like walking around or Japan? whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's weird, right? Because a, a place that's so populated and has so many people. I know. You he's would think would be filthy. So clean. And he's like, he's like, he's like, and, and he's like, people are just so nice. So nice. He's like, you can. Like, there's people are very respectful. There's no cutting in line or anything of that sort when you're waiting on line. And he said, everyone is just very, very nice. Like, after you, after you, you know. Um, he said there's, like, 
out there, there's a lot of guards with like guns and things like that. But oh, he, yeah? he's like, they're very polite. Oh, come in, sign. You know, very. Come in. Like come it's in. no, no. But he, and he goes to me. He goes, yeah, man. It was definitely a culture shock because I'm not used to that around here. No. And he said to me, you know what we need more around here that I saw out Japanese there. People? He goes. We need more love out here, man. He's like, it's not enough love. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of a hippie thing to say, but I, I could agree to what he was saying. There's no, everyone is out for themselves. Everyone is out to make sure they're all right. This, you know, um, you see it nowadays when um, there's a person in distress and people are just, I ain't getting involved. Yeah. I don't want to go over there. 100%. I don't want to, you know, you need more love of humankind and, it, where you, if you see a woman getting attacked or a man getting attacked or someone getting attacked, let me go help them. You yeah. know, that's funny when you see the videos of stuff like that, and you're like, if you would just put down the phone and stop videoing, maybe, maybe help, maybe help. Yes, exactly. Um, but I did see one on the news the other day, uh, recently. Um, it was a car on fire, and his door was trapped between a guardrail, so he, the guy couldn't get out. And you saw like six people run up, they're like. Literally, like, dude, they must have had gorilla strength at that time because they were like bending the guardrail. Yeah. Some guy walks over, hit, breaks the window, and they drag the guy out of the car. And I think something like that. I think I would jump in. I do. Yeah. If it's a, like a life or death situation. Yeah. On my way here, I saw a lady on the side of the, the highway, and she looked like she was in distress a little bit, didn't know what to do. I don't know if her car broke down. And I helped her out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I beeped the horn. I go, call 911. And I kept going. <laughs> I was waiting for and something. She gave me the finger, but I think it was more like a wave. I was waiting for something. I was like, <laughs> it's like uh, when we said leave the world behind. And, <laughs> and Spanish lady <laughs> on the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ayuda. Necesito ayuda. And, okay, I gotta go. And he's like, uh, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Well, bye. 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 <laughs> See, the dog needs help. I know. I got my, my, my little harpy here. All right. Well, I mean, I guess this episode sums up that we like pizza, we like sandwiches, and everybody else is a piece of shit. Yeah. So, right? You have anything you want to say? <laughs> this is my, my little girl, uh, Harp. Yep. Yeah. My, she's uh, she's She must have to go outside or something. She's because, a good dog. Yeah. Yeah. They're both good dogs. I just uh, gave her a groom the other day. I groomed both of them, and I think I don't know. I don't know if Guinness is down here. I think my wife had texted me. She's like, I don't know how Guinness got upstairs, but well, yeah. yeah. You know, we we try to keep them. Uh, and when we first did our first podcast, we kept I kept them upstairs, but then we noticed that they were barking all the time. When they're down here with us, there's no barking going on for the most part. It's pretty good. So, yep. my little guys, dogs. yeah. But on that note, I think we're going to start wrapping things up, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give a shout-out to uh, Sleepy John. Sleepy John. <laughs> uh, no, let's do a Traveler out of Buffalo Trace. Traveler. Buffalo that was actually Trace. pretty good. Actually, I was, I was pleasantly surprised on that one. Chris Stapleton. Keep uh, making alcohol. Kentucky yeah. whiskey. Guess you're good at it. And uh, shout-out to Swashbucklers. What was it? Is that one of this? <laughs> I couldn't wait till I swallowed <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It's swashbucklers. <laughs> it <is> swashbucklers. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a, a right thing. Shout out to Swashbucklers. Swashbuckler. <laughs> May the Swatch be with you. <laughs> uh, Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Yes. And uh, uh, guys, s- please s- thank spread you. Spread the love. Sp- you know, let someone go and uh, love in your heart. Yeah. If someone lets you go in the car. Give them a wave. Give them a thanks. Give them a nice thanks, brother. You know, something. Make make someone's day. It's the little, a tiny gesture like that can go a long way. Put yeah. love in your heart. Keep preaching. Preach it, baby. Preach. Cheers, John. Cheers, Ken. As always, cheers to you guys.